Okay, so now we're completely back into functions, and the next topic we want to discuss is the topic of continuity. Okay, now you may remember continuity from high school or from the Mechina or wherever you, you, you encountered it, and usually the way people define continuity is a function is continuous if you can draw it without lif lifting the pencil off the paper or without lifting the pen off the board, right? And we'll see, but it's going to take a bit, we're going to see where that intuition comes from, okay? But the definition is going to look completely different at first. So here's the definition. Back to functions, f of x is. f is continuous at the point A if the following holds. The limit of F as X approaches A not only exists, that would just say that F has a limit, but it happens to be precisely a specific value, that value being f at the point A. That's the definition. And what all this is saying, if you want to draw it, and I mentioned it before, all this is saying is that if this is f, And this is the point A, let's say, A. Let's make this axis a bit higher. So this is nah, too high. Got into the definition. Okay. This is F. This is the point A. For the picture of the limit, this was the picture we had for the limit. I'm making this hole ridiculously large, th just so you can see it. For the picture of the limit, this was the picture. We, ke we kept emphasizing that for a limit to exist, we don't care what the value of the function at the point A is. The value of the function at the point itself could be up here, or down here, or can even not exist at all, right? Can you give me an example of a function that has a limit, but is not defined at the point? X finite limit finite limit yes hmm? one over X minus I, I want a finite limit Ooh. okay let's 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 ma maybe some of may maybe some of oh, sh 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 maybe some of your examples of right but let's make the discussion simpler an example that was on the board in the previous hour. Sin x over x. Sin x over x, as x goes to 0, the limit is 1. We proved that. But it's not defined at 0, right? Sin x over x is not defined at 0. But it has a limit. The limit is 1. Do you agree? So it was exactly this picture for sin x over x. If you remember, it looks like this, and there's a hole here. Remember? Now, I'm throwing in just a tiny little new requirement. And it's really tiny because this is 99% of the work. This is where you have to work to find the limit. That's where things get challenging and sometimes you have to work hard. And then after you find the limit, you request one more tiny thing for it to be continuous. That the limit happens to be precisely equal to the value at this point. So suppose you find the limit is 17, is that the value of f at that point? In particular, it has to be defined. Okay? So this is really, this definition of continuity at a point, continuous at a point, is really epsilon close to having a limit at the point. Right? It's almost only requiring having a limit, and throwing in, you want that limit to be the value of the function at the point. Do you agree that this is the picture? Let me write, before questions, let me write a couple of equivalent definitions. Okay? 
So, equivalent definitions. One, F is continuous at A if, and what I'm going to do is throw in the definition of the limit into that definition. If, for any epsilon, there exists a delta such that x minus a is less than delta, and I'm not requiring this greater than zero that we had, because I am allowing x to be a now, right? Implies f of x, what do I want to write here? Minus f of a, that's our L now, is less than epsilon. Do you agree that this is precisely the same as the definition? It's just stating the limit thing in terms of its definition. And another equivalent definition is going to be stating the limit, but in terms of sequences by Heine. All three are useful, and that's what I mentioned that's why I'm mentioning all three, f is continuous at a if for any sequence going to a, and now I'm not requiring the sequence not to be a itself any longer, f of the sequence goes to what? f of a. So this is plugging Heine into the definition of the limit. Okay, and all three just say continuous. Okay, so having these three definitions, the first thing maybe usually we do is look for examples. Okay, question? This is the definition of continuity at the point A. If you look at a different point, it's going to be the same definition at that different point. A function can be continuous at one point and not continuous at a different point. Not, not true. Yeah, I know it's not true, but it sounds to me like that. No. If it, th this, is, this is a pointwise definition. Here I am defining what it means to be continuous at the point A. It's still for, for the future to define what do we mean when we say just a continuous function. What do we mean? Wait. Here all I defined is continuity at the point A. Okay. So examples. How can we find examples? Well, it turns out that we know many, many examples. In fact, almost all the examples you can think of are going to be continuous at almost any point you can think of. And the reason is a theorem that we mentioned earlier for limits. So recall, recall. This was a theorem that we mentioned for limits. For any elementary function, Remember what those elementary functions were? There was some eight families of functions, the good old polynomials and rational functions and trig functions and, and, and exponentials, and then their inverses, right? Remember? <coughs> Roots and, and, and logarithms and inverse trig functions, remember? And anything you can obtain from them using the elementary operations adding functions, subtracting functions, multiplying functions, composing functions. Remember that? And the theorem we had was for any elementary function, if you want to calculate the limit of f when x approaches a, what was the theorem? What do you get? You get f of a. That was the Or, or we, we, we wanted A to be in its domain. For any elementary function, 
um, this holds for any A in its domain. F has to be, of course, defined at A. Remember this theorem for limits? That's how we calculated limits all along, right? If, if once it was elementary, we just plug in the value and that's the limit, remember? So the, what, what, what is a, a, a more mature way of saying this statement now? On their domain, exactly. So, therefore, so saying um, this statement in, in state-of-the-art words, all elementary functions are continuous at any point in their domain. That's this statement. So now if you want examples, tons of them. Take any elementary function, take a point in its domain, it's going to be continuous there. Clear? Okay. Now, inside, hidden in the proof, we never proved this. We never proved this. Okay? But I said that later on, I'm going to give you the guidelines for how we prove this. I'm not going to do the, the full proof. It just takes some, some work and some time, and I don't want to spend that time. But I'm going to tell you the idea, and the idea is really everything. Okay? So how do we prove a statement like this or like this? This is the key theorem for limits and for continuity. So the, the, the steps in the proof... Just the key steps in the proof are the following. First you show, show that representatives of the eight families are continuous. So you take Remember, we, we started off with eight families of functions, right? The first one was polynomials, then uh, trig functions, then exponential functions. Remember? So first, show that this theorem holds for them. So for example, e.g., sine x goes to sine a as x goes to a. We proved this. This was one of the first examples of limits which we calculated. We proved this. We used, proved this by definition of epsilon uh, delta. We did this. Look back in your notebooks. We used a little, there was a little trick here using some trig formula in the middle, and we showed that if x minus a is less than delta, then sine x minus sine a was less than equal da 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 da, less than epsilon. We did this. Remember? Yes. Okay, uh, take an example of a polynomial. x goes to a if x goes to a. This is the, the function f of x equals x. This we did. This is trivial. Right? Take roots. Root x goes to root a. I think we did this one too. I think we did this one too. Do you remember? Okay. So you need to do these for, we didn't do all of them. We didn't do, for example, e to the x goes to e to the a, when x goes to a. Okay? But you first do these for the representatives of all these eight families. Okay? That's not all the elementary functions. Why? What do you still need to show? Why, does, why don't these representatives of the eight families cover all elementary functions? Because you can add them, compose them, and do all that. So that's the next steps. Show, show arithmetics.
this we did for limits, we showed that if f goes to l and g goes to k, then f plus g goes to l plus k, right? We did limit arithmetics. We proved some of them, but we didn't prove all of them, but we stated all of them. Show this for continuity. Show that if f of x goes to f of a and g of x goes to g of a, then f plus g goes to f of a plus g of a. Okay? That's easy once you've done limit arithmetics. Okay? Because if you know that f goes to l and g goes to k implies that f plus g goes to l plus k, then if l happens to be f of a and g happens to be g of a, then f plus g goes to f of a plus g of a. It's trivial. Do you agree? Okay? So this is another um, step which is almost immediate from arithmetics of... So this is show arithmetics for continuity. And I'll write follows from limit arithmetics. Is this clear? Is this statement clear? I, I, I want to make sure that everybody understood what I wrote here. This is important. Did everybody understand or do you want me to say it again? Good? I can say it again. We showed that if f of x goes to L and g of x goes to k, then f of x plus g of x goes to L plus k. That's limit arithmetics. Do you remember? Okay. Now I want to say, show continuity arithmetics. In other words, show that. Where's the definition of continuity? Here it is. Look here a second. Show that if f of x goes not just to L, but to f of A, and g of x goes not just to k, but to g of A, then f of x plus g of x goes to f of a plus g of a. That would be saying that f plus g is continuous at a. But that's trivial. It follows from limit arithmetics. The limit of this one plus the limit of the other one is the limit of the sum. Do you agree? Okay, so step two is easy once you do limit arithmetics. And limit arithmetics takes some work. We did some of them, not all of them. What's the only thing missing now? There's one thing missing. Who said? You're right. Composition. That's not part of limit arithmetics. So the only thing missing, and that would wrap up, wrap up the proof of, of, of uh, the fact that elementary functions are continuous, show that composition... of continuous functions is continuous. If you do all these three steps, then you're done. Because you show that the representatives are continuous. You show that by adding, subtracting, dividing, multiplying, or composing, you still get things that are continuous. Therefore, L, any elementary function is continuous. Do you agree? And this third step, this third step, I want to prove. It's, it's a two-line proof. It's not hard. Okay, yes? How do we show that for each one? There's so many different combinations. What do you mean for each one? No, okay, I, I think I understand your question. That's exactly the point. I don't want to show it for every elementary function. I want to show it for the families and for the operations, that the operations preserve continuity. And then if you take a function that you somehow got from composing, adding, dividing, subtracting elementary ones, you know that it's continuous because the, the factors from which you can, the building blocks were continuous and the operations preserved the continuity. That's this statement. Okay? Okay. So, 
What I do want to do is prove number three. Prove that when you compose continuous functions, I have to state it more precisely, I'll state it in a minute, and prove it. It's not hard. But there's, there's, a, there's a something to say here. Where this conti continuity arithmetics just stems almost for free from limit arithmetics, here the situation is different. There is no statement about composition of limits. It's not true. One can construct counterexamples. So this part three only becomes true when you're dealing with continuous functions. Okay, so this does not stem from uh, a more basic theorem about composition of limits, because it's not true for limits. So let me state this more precisely and prove it, and then we'll have this at our disposal to use from now on. So here's the statement. Let me erase what? Yeah, let's erase the recall because we remember this already. So here's the theorem. This theorem is part three of the steps in proving that any elementary function is continuous in its domain. And it's, it's the, the precise statement is the following. If G is continuous at the point A and F is continuous where where does F have to be continuous if I want to compose them? At? A. Not at A. I want to compose the functions. Right. And F is continuous, good, at G of A, then F composed with G is continuous at A. This is the precise statement of what I want to prove. Okay? Remember, F is going to act on G. So G is defined at, at A. F is going to act on G. So F is going to have to be continuous at G of A. Okay? And the composition is going to be continuous at A. It's F of G at A. Okay? Wait. Let, let me write it. So, proof. I'm going to prove it using the definition, and I have a choice. I wrote three different definitions, okay, and I can choose which one to use. I'm going to choose, since we, we, were, we were slowly building up our intuition and our, um, our ability to work comfortably with Heine, I'm going to use the, the second equivalent definition here, which is the Heine version of the definition. Look at this board a second. I'm going to use this, okay? So remember what it says. A function is continuous at A. If you take any sequence that goes to A, F of the sequence goes to F at A. That's this definition. Okay? So let's prove that fact using this definition. Let Xn be a sequence that goes to A. What do I want to prove? I want to prove that if I do f composed with g to this, it goes to f composed with g of a. That would be saying that f composed with g is continuous at a. Do you agree? So what do I know? Right, I know that g is continuous, so I know that g of xn goes to g of a as n goes to infinity. Do you agree to this? This is because g is continuous. g continuous at a. 
So this follows precisely for Heine's ver from Heine's version of the definition. Do you agree? Now, apply F. F of this thing, this is now the variable, g of xn, this is the sequence. What does this converge to as n goes to infinity? To f of g of a. Why is that true? This is since f is continuous at g of a. Look again at the definition by Heine. If f is continuous at g of a, then if you take any sequence converging to g of a, and this sequence converges to g of a, then f of the sequence is going to converge to f of g of a. Do you agree that this is, again, using the definition? And this was true for any sequence. For any sequence going to a, we show this. That proves that f composed with g, by definition, is continuous at a. Because f composed with g of any sequence goes to f composed with g at a. Okay? Very easy, but very easy to get confused from if you've just met Heine an hour ago. Okay, so think about this some more. Yup, you're confused. Good question. Okay, so, okay, I, I, I can say it again, but that may not be enough. I'll try, but you need to go home. If home is far away, just go to the dorms, sit in a cafe, some nice music in the background, think about this, okay? Many times it takes time and Absorbing is not something that happens many, many times, just the first time you see something, especially in math, especially in calculus, okay? You may need to think about it some more, to read it again, to do some practice exercises, and you get it. You'll get it. I, 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 I'm, I don't have any doubt that you'll get it. Maybe not right now, but let me try again. I took a sequence that goes to A. In order to show by Heine, that f composed with g is continuous, I want to show, let me write it here, want to show f composed with g of the sequence goes to f composed with g of a. Do you agree that this is what I want to show according to, de to the equivalent definition 2. I'm using equivalent definition 2 for f composed with g. Do you agree? And that's what I did. I took a sequence, xn goes to a. First I said, okay, g is continuous, therefore by equivalent definition 2, this holds. Then I applied f to it, and now I'm thinking of this as the xn's, call them yn's. f of yn goes to f of g of a whenever yn goes to g of a. That's this thing. So it's again just using definition 2. But now using it for this. f of this goes to f of this. Whenever blue goes to blue, f of blue goes to f of blue. That's the continuity at g of a. And then I said, okay, what is this? What's written here? f of g of xn is a different way of writing f composed with g at xn. f of g of a is this. So I just proved it. Then you use Heine backwards, the f last step. Well, I, I don't like the terminology, then I used Heine backwards. I'm not using anything backwards here. Then I used the definition again. I showed this, and I showed it for a general, for any sequence going to A. 
That's the definition. If for any sequence going to A, this holds, that means that F is continuous at F composed with G is continuous at A. Okay? I'm not saying this is easy. I just gave you every legitimacy you want that it's not easy. It's not hard. It just takes getting used to. Take your time. By tomorrow, be used to it. No. Just, uh, take your time. By next week, be used to it. Practice. You need to practice. Okay, we're going to use this all, all, all the time. We're going to use Heine and, and, and uh, regular definition. Choose whichever one we want every time. Okay. 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 So, so all of this, all of this was really about continuity at a point. At a point. How does this relate to continuity of a function? So when we say f is continuous, usually we don't say f is continuous at 5. Usually we just say f is continuous. So what do we mean when we say f is continuous? So that's what I want to define now. And then I'm going to argue that that definition really goes hand in hand with our intuition of being able to draw the function without, without lifting the pen off the board. So, some more definitions. Bullet. F is continuous um, from the right at A. If, tell me what to write. Right. The limit of f of x equals f of a when x approaches a from the right, which we denoted by x going to a plus. Does this make sense? Yes? Okay. Similarly for continuity from the left. Okay, so from the left... Let me not write the whole thing again. From the left is going to be a minus here. Is it clear what I wrote in blue such that I don't have to write it again? Good? Okay. So for example, example, uh, the limit of root x as x approaches 0 this is not defined, right? Because if the x's are negative, this you can't calculate roots of negative x's, right? But it is defined if we only allow x's to come from the right, in which case it's what? Zero. Root of 0, which is 0, right? Do you agree? Okay, so it makes sense to say that the function root x is defined is, is continuous from the right at zero. Okay. Okay, and now the definition we've all been waiting for, or almost. Let's let's just write them okay, two bullets. F is continuous on an open interval A B if f is continuous at any point x in the interval. So saying that a function is continuous on an open interval is just saying it's continuous pointwise, which is the original definition, at any point in the interval. Okay? And f is continuous on the closed interval, a, b, if it is continuous on the open interval, a, b, meaning it's continuous at every uh, inner point, and what? 
Right. And continuous from the right at A and continuous from the left at B. From the right at A. A is the left. The left end. No, what? A is the left uh, end of the interval, and I want it to be continuous from the right at A. And continues from the left at the right end of the interval. But won't it be if it's, on, if it's continuous uh, on the open interval? No, because continuous on the open interval is just saying that it's continuous for any point, for any inner point. Between A and B. Between A and B. Okay. At A itself, I cannot say that it's just continuous at A, because maybe it's not defined to the, to the left of A. Maybe it's only defined on this interval. In which case, I can only discuss continuity from the right at the left edge and continuity from the left at the right edge. Is there an example where it's continuous on A and B, but not continuous from the right at A? Yeah, here's one. Okay, so this you can, you can say, continuing this example, root X is continuous on, well, zero closed infinity in this case, or you can write here any B you want. But you can't say it's continuous anywhere to the left of zero because it's not defined there. Okay, so this is, this is the statement. The open interval contains all the points strictly between A and B. It doesn't contain A and B. And for all these points, we can use the regular definition of continuity. Whenever you want to discuss the end points of the interval, sometimes you can, but not always can you discuss continuity and at an end point. Here's an example. You can't discuss continuity of root x at the point 0 because you can't discuss the limit of root x at the point 0. You can only discuss the one-sided limit, therefore you can only discuss one-sided continuity. That's the reason for this definition. So you're good with Heine and you're confused yeah. with this? No, That's a first for me. Okay. Th think, think when you're ready to rephrase it, I'm ready to listen again. Okay, maybe I don't understand your question. That happens often. Okay, yes? Maybe it can be continuous from the left and from the right of A, but what if there's like a hole right at A? Then it, uh, what do you mean a hole? If it's not defined at A, it can't be continuous at A. Right. Because part of the definition of being continuous is being defined at that point, and not only that, but that being equal to the limit. So on the second okay. That's what we're requiring. We're requiring to be continuous from the right at A. Including A? At A. Only at A. Continuous from the right at A. Oh, okay. Continuous from the left at B. And continuous, honest to God, on all the other points in between. That's this statement. Okay. Okay. So... Try on your own. Here's, here's some, some practice. Practice. Let me add some. Okay, so try on your own to define continuity. Wait, I, I want to I wanna say something and continue a bit and then some more questions. So define, define continuity, it's not hard, but try it, on A, B, or on minus infinity, B, 
or on a open infinity. Try defining. Okay, use these to try to define those. And now comes the remark, which I'm, I've been hinting to since the beginning of the lecture today. Intuitively, F is continuous on an interval of any form if we can draw it without lifting the pen of lifting the pen, hmm, two Fs, off the board page of the page. Or the marker off the board or whatever. Or, <laughs> or the marker off the air. I want to draw it without lifting the marker off the air in, in what I'm going to do now. So what does it mean that it's continuous at the point A? It means that when I approach A, I get exactly that value. What does it mean that it's continuous on an interval? It means that it's continuous at every point in that interval, right? Meaning that at every point I have that limit, and the limit is precisely the value. So the intuition is that we can draw it without lifting the pen off the board or off the paper. Do you agree? Okay. But the formal definition, and that's what we're going to be working with, the formal definition is a point-wise definition, and it's closely related, 99% related, to the limit. Okay, and that's going to be crucial in this course. Okay, so this entire course is, is kind of walking back and forth between intuition, which is something very important in mathematics, and the formalism. Okay, and the uh, precise way of saying things and stating things and bridging these two points of view is 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 not necessarily easy because sometimes they tend to to take different routes okay so the formal definition of continuity is the definition we had the limit of f of x equals f of a when x approaches a at a point saying continuity for an interval meaning means satisfying that definition at any point in the interval, bless you, and therefore continuity intuitively means that you can draw the function without lifting the pen. Is that clear? Okay. What, remember what, what, where we started today. The definition was f is continuous at the point A. It's a pointwise definition. It's defined at a point. And saying that it's continuous is saying that it's continuous at every point. Okay? And I'm emphasizing this because it's not okay, it's not okay to write when you're answering a question, for example, on an exam, it's not okay to write, we can draw F without lifting the pen off the paper, therefore it is continuous. That's not legitimate. It's not something to laugh about. It makes sense. We, what we just did is argue why this is the right intuition, why it makes sense. Okay? So I'm not trying to be funny here. Sometimes I try to be funny, but not right now. It's, but it's still not okay to write that on an exam. Because when you express yourself in writing, when you want to be formal, whenever you want to prove things, you have to take the formal approach and not the intuitive approach. And the reason is, that whenever we say something is just intuitive, it means that there are gaps between the intuition and the completely formal statement. For example, one can, I'm not, I, I don't think we're going to do it here, uh, uh, maybe, one can write a function that's continuous only at one point. Only at one point, not continuous at any other point. Okay, so it's still going to have continuity somehow in it, but no way are you going to be able to draw it without lifting the pen off the paper. Okay? Even at that point. 
So the intuition is only good for the realm of good things. Okay, when, when you're on safe ground of good examples like elementary functions. But whenever you kind of allow things to be less intuitive, then the intuition breaks, whereas the formal definitions don't break. They hold ground. Clear? Okay, so after all this exciting speech, let's call it a day for today.